big part of Donald Trump's campaign strategy has been to try and undermine the legitimacy of the election. And then if he loses, he can just dismiss the whole thing as corrupt and claim victory anyway. It's a two-pronged approach. On the one hand, he's falsely casting mail-in voting, which we desperately need during a pandemic, as unreliable and corrupt. While at the same time, his administration is making cuts to the Postal Service, which would cause problems for mail-in voting. There have been reports of mail delivery being delayed across the country. The situation has gotten so bad that Democratic Senator Gary Peters of Michigan is launching an investigation into the delays. The guy overseeing all this is Trump's newly installed Postmaster General, a guy named Louis DeJoy. He is a top Republican donor who used to run a logistics company. So he presumably has a good understanding of what you would need to do to slow down mail service. Among the policies he's instituted have been barring overtime and having workers leave mail behind if they're running late. He admits to making the changes, saying they are necessary to cut costs. But today, Louis DeJoy denied that he's slowing down the mail on the president's behalf and that there is any slowdown happening at all. Joining me now is someone who might have some thoughts on all this. Mark Dimenstein, president of the American Postal Workers Union, which represents almost 200,000 Postal Service employees. Uh, Mark, uh, welcome to the program. All right, so give us the, uh, the straight story. Ha has something changed at the post office? Something definitely changed at the post office. The, uh, a few weeks ago, the new postmaster general put in some policies that we don't think can do anything but slow down mail. And so far, that's what the results have been. We're hearing it from postal workers all over the country, and we're hearing it from customers all over the country. You just can't arbitrarily cut hours of work, still have the same work there, and expect it to get done. You just can't arbitrarily stop the transportation of mail to its destination and, and expect it to get there. Something we're completely opposed to, something postal workers are completely opposed to. It's our, it's our DNA to treat the mail like our own, to get it to the customer. Uh, that's what we're about, and anything that does something different is something that we're very much opposed to. And we've shown that during this pandemic, courageously on the front lines, uh, serving the people of the country in these dangerous and troubling times, proudly doing so and, and, and connecting the country and connecting the people with each other. So, Mark, you know, people are talking about the implications for, for mail-in voting, but this assault on the post office by the Republican Party specifically has been going on for at least 15 years, hasn't it? I mean, part of the reason why they talk about the post office is, or the postal service um, is uh, supposedly, um, uh, you know, in, in deficit is because of a requirement that a Republican Congress instituted uh, back in the aughts. Tell us about that. Well, in all fairness, the facts are that that was actually a bipartisan act. The, uh, the Republicans were uh, in, in power then, but not, and in all ways, and it was a bipartisan uh, bill that passed. But that's that's something that's out there that has to be dealt with, and a lot of people in Congress on both sides of the aisle do want to fix that problem. The real financial crisis right now is the impact of the COVID-induced economic crisis that's affecting us all so deeply, deeply affecting the United States Postal Service. And Congress needs to act is a $25 billion part of the HEROES Act from the House of Representatives that would provide emergency relief to the United States Postal Service. That's not relief for CEOs and for shareholders. That's relief to the people of this country that depend on and support this invaluable service, this national treasure. It's now in the hands of the Senate and this administration, and they need to get it right. In the end of March, they had a chance they took care of the private sector with over $500 billion of relief, nothing for the post office. They need to get it right this time. Well, uh, just quickly, I mean, uh, is the post office going to be able to deliver um, the, the ballots? I mean, it's, it's, the post office can handle this, can it? The post office can absolutely handle it if we have the support. Mail, mail in ballots, we've been doing for generations. We proudly do it. We're not beholden to any candidates, any political parties. We're beholden to the American people and to help give them access to the ballot box. That's part of our civic duty. It's going to be ever more needed in this pandemic where people are going to have to, in order to vote safely, they're going to have to vote by mail. So we do it. It's secure. There's virtually no fraud. That's what all the history says. But they need the support to well, get it done and get it done right and get I'm, the mail there on. American Postal Workers Union President Mark Dimenstein, thank you so much for being with me.